does it with the youth, uh, directly with those women? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. This is the Friends of Pearson Square meeting that we're having, and uh, it's been a very uh, great six months working with a lot of the residents and with people and figuring out what, what's going on and how to form this friends group and, and really make it something that is going to make an impact in this area. We, I've really worked with some amazing community partners that hopefully are um, represented here tonight very well and also with some residents who have, who have gone above and beyond for me. So tonight's a big meeting for us because the McPherson Square Friends are actually coming uh, together and we're going to elect officers and it's, on, it's starting a little 501c3 amongst community residents that should you know, take care and be here. So we're very excited. Thank you all for coming. With the Friends Group, we'll be able to help support this library, Judy, and, and really make a difference on what we've been doing. Um, so I want to just introduce myself, and I'm Tessa Renshaw, I'm the Community Outreach Manager for the Friends of Free Library of Philadelphia. So first of all, I'd like to say that the captain of the 24th District, the new captain, last night was your, your coming out, you had a community meeting and a lot of people got to meet him. We're so excited that you made it to our meeting, and it speaks volumes to us as community members who have been working with the 24th. and and, uh, and a definite change for you to, to show your respect in coming here. So thank you, and I'd like you to introduce yourself. Thanks. Um, my name's uh, Captain Chuck Pope, and I just started last week. Um, we're, uh, just like you know, uh, I, Officer Wallace has been a long time community relations officer here, and she does a really fine job. And we're looking to expand our uh, relations with the community, uh, the 24th District. Um, we're going to be changing a lot of things. You're going to see you're going to see more cops. You're going to see men on the street doing different things, bike patrols. Uh, it's the style, the hours they work, making a lot of adjustments with what I have. The way I'm going to configure are five platoon tactical officers, which are the cops that don't generally answer the 911 calls. They're out there to do the proactive policing. They're out there to chase the uh, drug dealers and lock up the prostitutes and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm changing their hours so I get more out of them at nighttime. Uh, and we're also, uh, and then generally they work 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., so I need them more in that window. Uh, there's also going to be a larger group of them. Uh, we're also going to, uh, we'll have our nar district narcotics team back shortly, okay? Uh, but you're gonna, we're having more officers, bicycle trains, you're going to see them out here in a bike uniform. Can I, can I say that I saw them last night going through the park about 6.15, 6.30? Well, and I, I haven't even made the, the, the change yet because I have contractual issues with the Fraternal Order of Police. I have to give them 30 days notice. So when I do this, you're going to see that bigger group. So there's going to be more of them. We're also going to have a daytime contingent uh, during the week. With the, uh, it'll be uh, 10 officers all together. Uh, we have two officers that we have down on Aramingo Avenue, but you guys may know the two. I was just discussing the two that work Kensington Avenue. Uh, they used to work separately together on Kensington Avenue with different ends. Now they're a team. And you're also going to be seeing uh, the, an additional three to five bicycle officers, including this army. Uh, you're also going to see, we have a, I'm sure you guys saw it, we have like a mini van. We have the, it's like a mobile home. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the plan is that, that thing's going to move basically up and down Kensington Avenue from Allegheny down to Somerset. And we're going to vary it. So, you know, they guys don't know we're handing a sign out every day in the same spot. And then the bicycle patrols uh, will be operating right in around that station all the time, so we'll be in those areas. But generally, the area focuses uh, pretty high up to the wow. So we're going to increase that. To be honest with you, that's where most of my final front is to try to look at the mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing more of that. Uh, also, you'll be seeing that we, we have got a program we're working on now. Uh, we're having flyers printed up in English and Spanish. We're going to go up and down to every store on Kensington Avenue. Tell them we'd like to place these flyers, which are really a statement of what the no loitering ordinance is in the city of Philadelphia. Let them know we're going to enforce it, and we're going to place it in all the storefront windows. Also, if you guys have any problems, stores, corner stores, Chinese stores, takeouts, anything like that, where crowds are gathering, you know, let us know. Uh, if you were called to the district, let us know. We'll get signs out there. Uh, the thing is, I want these signs in place before we really start pushing hard and enforcing this. But want to have this tactical group come together and working together. So uh, that's one of the things we're doing. I also have a, uh, last week I started a wagon at nighttime out here to start enforcing prostitution ordinances. Wow. Um, and we're also going to be doing some district level vice work. Uh, typically, um, that's been left up to the citywide 
citywide vice unit. The problem is they got to cover the whole city, so we don't get coverage at them all the time. They might be up here, you know, a couple days a month working. Well, we need this every day. Uh, Ten years ago, I left the 15th district, but I spent uh, six and a half years up there, and I was a tactical sergeant up there. I ran all the narcotics, and I ran the foot beats and the bikes and all that stuff. Well, one of the things I did was we did district-level bikes enforcement. That is, my officers went out, and unmarked cars in plain clothes, posed as Johns, and uh, we would arrest them for prostitution so that we get them put away. And for, for a great uh, many years, we managed to keep Frankfurt Avenue from the creek north uh, clear. In fact, they were coming your way because you were getting no resistance over that middle side. Well, now I'm here, so I'm looking to push them back up that way. <laughs> so we're going to start uh, enforcing that. So you, hopefully, you're going to see it. And the ultimate goal of that is, of course, not just to remove them, but to remove the uh, kind of it kind of gives you that image to the public, like hey, the cops must have thrown their hands up because look at this, they're all out here in the street and standing around, and crowds gathered, and so on. But they're really not prostitutes. For me, let's take care of that visible stuff first. Get that done. I don't want kids walking over crack bags and condoms on the way to school. I always say this, you know, you could be a resident on the block, and there could have been two burglaries on the street behind you. You don't know anything about those burglaries. But sure enough, you walk out of your house, and there's two drug dealers, and there's four prostitutes, you see them right away, don't you? Mm -hmm. And that's crime to you. Crime to you is what you see. Yes? Captain, I don't know if this came up in the PDAC meeting last night with Patty Kalina, but since we run the KMA Business Association, we are happy to send an email to the members and, and Linda Ocasio Cal, which coordinator is doing this, uh, signing them up for the bike patrol, providing financial support. So we are happy to sort of collaborate with you on that effort. I mean, you can tell them that you're coming, or we could take some of it. I understand. Um, or say it's like this is what, what the police are doing. Because it didn't come up at the meeting yesterday. Well, I understand those private security bicycles that are going to be used are similar to, it's, it's the, um, it's probably uh, a Barton. Barton. Yeah. They're the same organization. Ally Barton. Ally Barton. They're the same organization that runs the bicycle down on Middle Avenue. Right. Which we run that business association. In the I actually you know the, the guy that runs that um, used to be my boss when he first made it captain. Uh, and I, I'm hoping I may, I believe it's the Aramigo Businessmen's Association. He usually attends them, and that's next week. Yes. So I'm hoping to talk to him next week about that. Because if there's a way that I can incorporate his security guys into in and around our mobile station along with our bike guys, I might get more bang for your buck out of it. So yeah. but also we've been doing work with maybe some of the SEPTA police and, and working with them as well. Um, right there on the corridor. Well, let me ask you, you know better than me. SEPTA running bike cops down here? They're not they don't have jurisdiction past the steps. But, they but they would, if they see something they're gonna help. I'm not sure what their resources are. Now, SEPTA, as well as other police agencies other than the Philly TV in the city, okay. they kind of all have been downsizing because of economic problems. Right. And I know SEPTA has lost a lot of officers. Also, things people use as information that we can give out because um, a lot of times we can distribute stuff via email, but like when we have something in our hand that we, we can give out 500 at a time at an event, that we're, we're, we're having the conversation, we can give something immediately. Because, I, I mean, we, we've heard it. That's, I, I've heard about six meetings, you can report it online. But unless I could give out like 600 of these things, and we can print them up, we just want to work on what is the content you need, the minimum content you need to report a crime, and like make that real simple and for people to access. Something they don't have to go to the district to pick up. Something they don't they have they don't have to go to the district to drop off or buy an envelope for a stamp to mail. Like something that eliminates all those barriers. Where um, so we can help create that. We just need your expertise in saying what what what's the accurate information that goes on to this stuff. Well, I, I I wouldn't have a problem doing that. Me for specific things like like this one. Like like the the ATV thing. Right. The, I mean the, the loitering thing. Uh, how to report a crime safely, like what information you guys are looking for. I know what you're saying. If we have an issue like the loitering, like what it is that the loitering statute actually says and what we can do about it. What I'm saying is it's just the distribution of the information. Like it's good to put it in storefronts, right. but you still have a limited amount of people who access those stores within the community. Not but you have you want to have a way to get it out quicker to the community. Yeah, because we do like meetings like this, and then sometimes like I know Impact is amazing at distributing flyers and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So while they distributed well, flyers, if they had like these 
It also things people use as information that we can give out because um, a lot of times we can distribute stuff via email, but like when we have something in our hand that we, we can give out 500 at a time at an event, that we're, we're, where we're having the conversation, we can give something immediately. Because I, I mean, we, we've heard it, that's, I, I've heard about six meetings, you can record it online. But unless I could give out like 600 of these things and we can print them up, we just want to work on what is the content you need, the minimum content you need to record a crime, and like make that real simple and for people to access. Something they don't have to go to the district to pick up, something they don't they have they don't have to go to the district to drop off or buy an envelope for a stamp to mail. Like something that eliminates all those barriers where um, so we can help create that. We just need your expertise in saying what, what, what's the accurate information that goes on. We can work with you on that. I mean, uh, you know, on uh, first tonight we're not going to be able to do it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, but if you want to come over and set something up with Tina, we can a future date. We can come over and uh, discuss. We would have to take that as the topic of the day. For instance, let's say we want to start out with uh, the motorbike issue. So that would be the first right. thing you could circulate. But, um, you know, I don't want to speak for you know, I'm not really sure. Is there something in particular that any of you guys, other than the murder bikes, would like we have to Drug we sales. Have. Like when you see open air drug sales, if there's drug, open air drug sales on my block, mm -hmm. and I see a cop go by, then it doesn't make sense to me to call the cops about the open air drug sales that they're witnessing. Oh, yeah. But they're, they're, if I had something that says, well, this is how exactly what you do. And it was simple, and it was easy to follow, and it was easy in a safe way for me, or a perceived safe way for me to get that information, you guys. Then I think you'll have a higher, you know, chance of receiving information. When I was in the 15th district, we had a dedicated phone line in the district, and it was an older building, of course, than we have over here in 24. But I was able to actually put an answering machine on that line, and all people, we just gave out the phone number. Got anything? I don't care what it is. Yeah. On the side, that maybe you got information on drug dealing, prostitutes, problem houses, and we just gave the number out. Every time we went to these meetings, we gave the number out. People used to leave us all kind of tips. I mean, every day I would have a cop come in, listen to the messages, pull out, you know, what was complained about, and we would take action based on those calls. Or sometimes there might be tip information. It might have been a shooting. Maybe somebody just wants to say, "Listen, that guy you're looking for for Kensington Avenue in Clearfield." He was wearing a green hat and he got on the three bus or whatever, you know. And then we just leave something. And that's all they had to leave. You don't tell us your name or nothing. Right. And we would just act on whatever we could with what you gave us. Well, I would like to do that for the 24th district. I don't know that I can get that dedicated phone line. That's the issue. But if I can, that might be an even easier solution. It's yeah. just to find a way to get the number out and tell them, look, whatever you got. You want to give us. Maybe even if it was like a cell phone, it could be texted too. That'd be good. Well, I'm looking for a solution for that, but I figured the easiest yeah. way first. Yeah, tweet, tweet. He's running out. Yeah. Yeah. Not a question. Just uh, what John and you said when you're sit, is, when you're standing talking, it sounds like both are the combination that's needed because the one thing wasn't on the table is the, the threat of being recognized by somebody being, turning people in. Mm -hmm. But if you have close to the stores. And the area already knows it gets blanketed solicitation just from the service. <laughs> they don't know where it comes from. Right. Ever. And right. even even like three or four versions of the same, like different versions of the same content where it looks different. Mm -hmm. You know, because one of the ideas we had was um, to create like Netflix looking envelopes where people just mail in new tips because it looks like Netflix and it's safe to mail the stuff in. Believe me, I'm open to all ideas. But I think if you have an anonymous number at the district level, we're not, not going through several letters and a department where it's coming directly to us. If I can get that phone line established and we yeah. just advertise that, put it out in English and Spanish, right. or little cards or however you want to do it, I really think that's the way to go. Because anybody can, everybody has access to a phone. Right. And Great. you don't have to say anything. You just, I mean, as far as identifying yourself, just call us, give us what you want to give us. Perfect. Well, I would like to thank you for coming again, and I hope that we see and we can continue these conversations more and more, uh, and have you participate with us on, on a level that well, I appreciate it. We, uh, it it's and definitely a change, and we really yeah, and appreciate I'm it. That, I'm hoping more and more seats get rolled up. They will, and yeah. and we're and it's, right now we're yeah. starting the officers and putting them into motion, and it's been a long process, and, um, and so we're ready to work with you, and we really appreciate your participation. I'm just going to go over to the point.
from here. Okay. Just meeting because they're trying to form to do things around the okay. Uh, we do. We we we've, we've had safety meetings. The lights are were a problem. We've been in the process. So you're coming, jumping in, kind of like in between a whole um, initiative that has been the Pearson Square Revitalization Coalition. Just so I know. So I right. Go ahead. I understand. It's a time. lot of information. What is it you guys normally do outside of the police end? Uh, this is where it's a whole big process, and I'm, I I would definitely. If you're or you planning staying for the rest of the meeting, I can no, explain all the All right, then I'll put, I'll do a quick thing. Is that uh, this this park and this area has a library in the middle, obviously. Right. Um, the community has been dealing with a lot of the different problems going on. Uh, there was an initiative to kind of bring more programming to the park and to the library and, and bring a bigger light to what it is. And through that, PHS was going to plant 131 trees, and it, we had a festival and there was planning going on. There was a lot of different dynamics. Um, the, the tree plan wasn't really done with the residents because they were just going to plant these trees and uh, the Friends of the Free Library was one of the people at the table and what we do is we connect residents to their library but that was kind of hard because of the safety conditions. I can't advocate for kids to walk through the, to this library and participate in these activities with the open air drug market that they have to walk through to get here. At, at one point there were people putting needles in their neck, like the rampant heroin use was pretty bad when it was when we were first thinking about trying to do something in this park and safety is a big issue, especially the needles. So we have been working to make it a place that is, you know, we are friends of this library and this organization that we're actually going to establish tonight to advocate for children to come here because I feel like it's somewhat getting there. It's been a hard road and there are improvements. There finally was trash cans put in, there were signs put up, and that was advocacy groups that happened with community partners, we had impact services, we had epic stakeholders, we had many people with a lot of residents behind them on this forefront. And now the, the friends group itself is the residents are, and people, the community partners that have grown up, lived here and are from here um, are going to be friends of the free library and kind of work now on this initiative with along with city agencies and, and community partners that work with city agencies. Okay. So it's actually really exciting because um, residents from the area are going to be brought to a table on this whole initiative. And if you look on here, you see that we have the tree walking uh, meetings coming up. And that's, that's in response to, to some of the things we've had going on. Maria Sanchez has worked with us, Justin DeVerdinas, the Parks and Rec, to get lighting to improve the area. Um, lighting is, is on the table and there's a few other things going on there. The tree plan was delayed to have residents be part of the process. So it's more going to be a resident driven process rather than in the beginning it was kind of not res resident dri driven if you will. So here we are and it's, it's still going and this is our really first friends meeting of, of structure. So I appreciate, this was, I kind of seen you here, I kind of went off the agenda a little bit because I think we all can agree that having uh, I'm sorry to take up your time. No, I, 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 introducing yourself and meeting with you on an intimate, like to, to have this conversation is, is really good because we've been working really hard to kind of have it with the 24th right. and and it hasn't happened quite as organically as it did today and thank you for coming. I just want to throw one more thing out before I go. Right. Uh, if you have events uh, or... We will be having events. Comcast Care Day is coming. <coughs> Which is big, because we're going to need you. Comcast Cares Day is going to be coming to the square. And we're going to need parking signs put up to say no parking. Cause well, let me go, let me go even a little further than that. Okay. If you're going to have, let's say you're going to have a clean up the park yet. Which is going to, yes, that's happening. What I would appreciate, if you could, if you could give us a call to coordinate that with Keenan. And I'll tell me explain why. Right. When I realign my tax laws, I'm going to have a week, one week of the month where I'm going to have sort of extra personnel working day work. And I'm going to have them on Saturday or the day. If there are events that you plan for Saturdays, I can give you a nice police presence for this. But I need, okay. you, need to, you need to coordinate it with us so I make sure it, I can line that Absolutely. Saturday up and the with table. their schedule. And then I can give you, you know, I mean, let's say you're having a, a right. clean up day or you're having an event for the kids. The you know, mayor's coming to do a press conference from here on March 6th. March the 6th. March the 6th at 1 o'clock. Yeah. Yes, and that's going to announce, and he's going to be here to kick off his his cleanup um, day, which is April 14th, and he's doing it from here. And then April 14th, a week later after that, on April 21st, this site, McPherson Square, in this area was picked, which is a very big deal by Comcast to be a site for Comcast Cares Day. 
I mean, even, we're, we're going to get into this in the meeting, and I'm sorry that this is all happening like this, but... Well, let's get into the meeting. Yeah, let's get into the meeting and, and, and do it now. Um, so I'm going to move on. Well, folks, it was nice meeting you. Uh, See, that that's right. And like I said, please, uh, if, if you have, uh, what if you're going to uh, have events, please get a hold of team so we coordinate that. I'll call Certainly. you, and we will sit down and, and sure. have, a actually, um, we're going to be having a president actually over if, here, John. If yeah. he wants to go on Facebook, look up Kensington Community Television. Look up the older posts, a lot of footage from these meetings that I filmed in the post. Oh, okay. Ken, I'm going to tell you on Facebook. Just look it up. Thanks. All right, guys, nice to meet you. I hope I hear from you, okay? Right. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. 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 Since that was a little throw off, and I, although I think very important that we had the conversation that we did, and I'm really excited that he was able to, to be here, members of the 24th. I'm just going to kind of go over and now um, adjust the agenda to work to what we need to get accomplished tonight. So I don't mean to go and, and miss anything that was really uh, important here. I will go through real quick. Comcast Cares Day, uh, you'll see, is one of the pamphlets or one of the sheets that you got when you walked in. and. The friends group that we are trying to form and we've been working with and, and, and why we are here tonight is going to be active in the role of Comcast Cares Day and we can get into that uh, more as we as we set up our structure which is going to happen um, in a few minutes. So Comcast Cares Day is the 21st. The tree planting um, collaboration meetings obviously are, are listed here and I don't know if anyone saw, but there was an article in the newspaper today that, that described something that had gone on yesterday. There were trees that were planted, it was a mistake, um, and there was a report in the Philadelphia Daily News and on the McPherson, I posted on McPherson Square Revitalization Coalition for everyone to see if you wanted to see exactly what went down with that. But um, the trees were removed and we are going to have the tree planting again, the Friends Group, we look forward to being partners on that initiative as well. And I want to get over to the librarian report because it's really important for the Friends group works with the librarian to improve the services and there's been some things going on so I want to just give a little library report right now and I'm going to hand it over to Judy Moore. Okay, well, February, we're doing Black History Month for coloring every Black History person in the world. Um, today they're doing Michelle Obama and Barack Obama and we got this idea to write a letter to Barack Obama and make his letter to Black Hidden Year. Except now they decided they want to invite Michelle to get him. They want Michelle. So we're going to send them, you know, I don't know if they don't come, but it's something for the kids to learn to write letters and, um, you know, see what, see what maybe we can get a poster out of them or something. I don't know. So that's one of their big projects, and they're very, very, very excited about that. Um, we are um, working on a series of teen movies. Um, Amy has been working on Amy Thrasher is my, I mean Thatcher, I'm sorry, is my, is my library. She's working on that. And when Comcast was out here, they were excited about the idea of donating a big screen TV to us. So it would be a little bit more fun to have a movie night than on a big screen rather than just on that little TV. So that, that's what we're working on. Um, what else are we doing? Um, we are working on a project called, um, part of my Spanish, Dia la Niños, Dia de los Niños. Yeah, and Dia de los Libros. Um, the day of the child, the day of the book. Mm -hmm. I have four people who have signed up to um, read to the children in Spanish, while well, I to do a craft. I'm getting some um, stickers and free giveaways from um, the national organization who's having this day. We'll do a craft. And um, anybody else who would be interested in reading to them? Uh, I thought about proposing the idea that if the friends group wanted to buy some books since it's the day of the book. We, yeah, we can do any books, a bunch of them. Yeah, the especially if they were they, Spanish. They, right, absolutely. We have, we have plenty. Spanish and English. 
Yeah, yeah, some left over, I think, from, from different events that we had done, so okay. definitely. Yeah. Will you bring stuff for them to take home or stuff for the library? Something for them to have, have a yeah. book since it's yeah. the day of the book. You can have them. Yeah. Um, and Lillian Marrero, the friends of Lillian Marrero, they also wanted to do, I mean, do something as well, and mm -hmm. maybe we can work together and I'm getting some some good stuff yeah, going. Um, I think, Martin, did you say Miss yeah. Puerto Rico, or Pennsylvania? Yeah. Maybe she was going to do something, come to the library, maybe she could read a book. Yeah, Miss Puerto Rico, Pennsylvania, also works with Miss Puerto Rico. Um, the children. That's a great. I think that, I think they would love that. Especially if she wore it. Yeah, imagine she wore it around. <laughs> what's maybe the, the princess film thing? Yeah. Like, what's the date of the event? Uh, April 30th. April 30th. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, the French group will definitely support you on that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you noticed when you came in, we're having a Black History Trivia concert. I mean, contest. My LA, one of my library assistants, came up with this all by herself. She donated the prizes. She, she researched the questions. This is her contest. I'm putting her in for a community service support for that. <laughs> Very nice. Maybe you could get it noticed if when the when the prize is awarded and things like that. Maybe that would be a positive bit of news that might be put in the newspaper and shared with the press mm -hmm. uh, about some of the positive things that are happening in the park. We seem to have uh, okay, a lot of on. relationships with okay. the press. Uh, are you kidding me? We are having a um, Haitian music and folklore event. What was um, Haitian music and folklore. I have a stack of flyers for this event. Um, the kids will be able to make um, their own rhythm instrument, which they'll play along with. They're out there to take the uh, drug dealers and lock up the prostitutes and that sort of thing. Uh, and just putting on the performance. So they'll go like that. They'll make the instrument and then they'll do singing and stories and they'll they'll be the band. You know. So that is coming up on uh, March the 14th at 4 o'clock and I got flyers on that if you want that. Uh, we had a new book drop box. We had a little bit of problem with it once, but it's still functioning so you know, we have these, these days when we can't open because we don't have enough staff, so finally people bring their DVDs or something and we're not open. Or on the weekend or at night, they can put them in there. Um, that, that way you don't have to keep coming back to try to return your things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and people should know that anything you put in there, we backdate it so that, you know, if it, it, it's in there overnight, it, and you got it in there and you backdated it the day before. So it's a way that people don't get shared with fines all the time, too, because they couldn't come to the library. Thanks, Mr. Okay. So, could I ask one question? You have flyers, and, but, but people who might not come into the library, I know that they fix the wall outside. Mm -hmm. Maybe since they, they're uh, doing some work on the library, you could get a bulletin board or something outside so you could post your flyers and things outside. So well, could, if the friends want to buy a bulletin board or something, yeah. Well, or or the, the, yeah, the friends definitely would be interested. It's in just a great PDF opportunity. So mm -hmm. it's a little, I don't mean to be so negative, but well, I, it hasn't worked I, yet. I, I saw what they did with the concrete, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the drop, book drop. I understand about that one, too. And this lady is talking, uh, that's Ann Humphrey. She's uh, the library administrator. Hi, I'm from the 16 branches through north and south Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I apologize for the closings, but out of the 16, I only have two branches currently fully staffed. We're still working under a 22% budget cut from the city. And we're so, working to increase that. <laughs> We've been doing some better. Yeah, I'm afraid they will increase it to a 25% budget cut. But as it, so I'm, I'm sorry we closed. This is, I'm doing the best we can. I try and rotate the closings so that no one place gets hit all the time. But y'all are going to get hit, just not all the time. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, there's nothing I can do. I can't duplicate anybody, and they won't let me use inflatables. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the French group's really important to maintaining and helping uh, the programming and keeping things going here. So we really look forward to, to bringing that here to Pearson Square. Um, branch concerns? You want any branch concerns? We kind of just said the book drop. Um, yeah, no. So. No. I mean, we, we, you know, we have our graffiti moments, and uh, I don't know if anybody noticed they fixed the front steps today. 
They did fix the front wall and then the kids threw it on it and I think they fixed it again today. So okay. it's one step forward, two okay. steps back sometimes. So good, great. Okay, this is, I'm going to get back to the, this really important part of this meeting. Uh, hopefully um, it goes as well as, as this whole process has been and this journey has been for the past six months working with the residents and people from McPherson Square and, and it's, I really can't be more thankful for some of the people that have supported uh, coming to all these meetings and working in different ways with me. I'm, I'm very proud to have the final outcome, have a, a friends group that is set up with officers that are, are at the table and no longer me in a way. I've been kind of at the table with different things and initiatives that have been going on and I strongly feel that residents need to be at that table and I just wanted to make sure that we were formed enough to have residents that were leaders and strong enough and committed before we really went ahead and had the McPherson Square officers <coughs> being picked out and through the processes of all working together and in this community uh, and working with other agencies and, and groups it was you know, relate to me, we had different discussions here and there of what leaders would, would emerge from this group and be able to take the McPherson's Friends um, group here to the forefront of the table with, you know, when we work with Phyllis and we work with Parks and Rec. One of the things we, we, dis we discussed is um, two options I, I guess presented to the group, and the two options being, one, um, since you have worked and you've done and you've been working to appoint so give them the option of either appointing a board and trusting your, your decision on that or uh, to do nominations, which will allow the group to, you know, have so a you're, board. So, uh, and you're absolutely so right. I, think, I guess the two options, what we discussed earlier was, um, and, I don't know, there's a lot of ways to do it, but one is, I guess, the first vote, which I think everybody has a voice in here to vote on, is whether to... Um, to allow Tessa, who's uh, accountable to whatever the French group is supposed to be and doing all those outcomes, appoint officers or, and the, or the group nominate officers and vote. Right? Vote on Absolutely. I guess. So, I could, guess could I know. suggest just an interim board be decided on and then the board can alleviate all the stressors and go around and do things through the channels that you're suggesting? I know there's legal things that you're trying to touch on here. But not all the residents, these are the people doing the work here. So I articulate the three options. In other I'm words, take an interim, so right now people who are ready to step in and take charge do we need to work on. And, and then whatever political policy has to touch on. Wait, wait, can Willie, Willie was actually like... Well, you know what, Phyllis? Do you want to do, to be honest? Okay. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of the, the motion and all this other stuff. No permanency, not yet. I, I, Not until you went through the avenues. I think you're fabulous, Jonathan, but, but I, I am taking exception to the process because you have come into the neighborhood and you have not respected the boundaries and you've operated in, a, in, in quite a discourteous way. And if you are to have a group that represents the neighborhood and you are selecting the officers, that just doesn't seem right. Okay, and I don't think the process really bears much scrutiny. So we, we have not seen your manual. Uh, I, I think it's a very fascinating way to operate where you say it is an independent board and you select the officers as a I did not select, I nominate it for, and I believe that the people around me who support me <laughs> would respect my decision. I, I, I just, I just... It's not, it's not I'm, not, I'm telling them this is it, that is it. We, the people who are here who don't fight the momentum and everything that you just said about me, it is, is very, is very interesting and I wish I had the capacity we, to deal with what... If we, if we could, if we could breathe for a moment and, uh... uh send an interim board and that will go from there. And this is because a lot of big things are coming up in the next few weeks, and it's time, it's not, I'm not supposed to be at the table anymore, and it's time for people to be at the table to deserve to be there as representatives and support yes. the friends yes. on, on a, a very amazing level, and yeah. it's time for that to happen. Yeah. Coach yeah. Craig, can I please, go ahead, please. Um, you know, I don't know too much about the politics thing, that's not my thing, but I do understand what controversy is. 
and I take that from the board. So therefore, on that note, I mean, I agree on both parts. I like what you're doing, but I also understand what this woman is trying to say. And that community, keyword, the community, meaning the people of this neighborhood, need to know and face the people that they want to nominate. So I can understand where she's coming from. Also understand your point as well. Now, I do think y'all will make a great leader. But in this case, in this scenario, we're in a totally different atmosphere. I don't know how many of these people are from this area. I know I am not. I'm from Allegheny Avenue. But the idea is, is that you're in a totally different area. You just can't shove this down people's throats and they don't, these people in the community, you have to give them a chance to come out and meet our people. That way they know who we are as a group. Yes, we all are trying to do something we positive do. here. Right. We all and are we trying to do our own thing. The people but, that I would that I would suggest to be on the, on this on this board, right? No idea. This temporary board would right. be yes. people that that are are the voice of the community. That I understand. The, I, understand, I, understand that. I understand where you're coming from, but like I said, you just can't come to somebody else's house and try to shove stuff down their throat. I didn't do that. I didn't say you did. Right. I never said you did. I'm just saying this is what you know. What I mean? Right now, you got this. This is going on. Mm -hmm. In order to get something it done, and it should right. be, it, it should be, it should, it should have been the way it was supposed to be. I but agree. The, but the you ego in the room, it didn't happen that but way. You that's okay. But you can't do that. What you gotta do is you gotta remove the guard. Right. You're the new piece on the board. That's the guard. In order to do that, you have it's called a process of collaborating. Mm -hmm. You gotta collaborate. This is what I'm gonna do. Okay. So right, therefore, say, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guard. say that Easy we should have a temporary board in place, and I'm gonna leave. Piece of paper up here. If you want to run for president, if you want to run for president, if you, yeah, they are. If you want to run for president, if you want to run for treasurer, secretary, and whatnot, maybe sign up. If you're interested in the roles, that you see what they are, the descriptions of these roles and what it entail. And I don't want to lose out on any of these good things I heard you discussing earlier. We are in need of an immediate acting board. Whether it's Phil's here, sits on this board, a neutral board that's going to look out because the mayor coming here to make an announcement. Exactly. I don't need to be the table for that. We're not going to drop the ball. And that's all another way to show the residents we're not stealing it. We're just carrying it forward because we are doing this progressively to bring them the, what they need, what they've been without Absolutely. for us so long. And that's what I was trying to do today. That's all. To try to set up the residents and the that people from wonderful. this neighborhood and get myself out, out of it because and I deserve to be there. Every day I'm here for it can be inviting them in and they can be meeting them as they're going through the process and seeing everything. It, it'll be a wonderful connection. It was a great. So. I, I I'm going to I'm going to move. Can we can we allow just every because there's a I think there's been a couple cutoffs. Okay. So now people are talk. Mm -hmm. I, I I think again, my concern is about the openness of the process, which I understand elections and an open process are not convenient because you can't control the outcome. On the other hand, that's the nature of elections, and and this is. The neighbors' friends meeting. You are supposed Listen, to be supporting. I, I, I am. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse you speak because nice. you've been speaking for uh, about an hour, and uh, actually, so um, it is about the openness of the process, the fairness of the process, and not about you coming in and dictating what's going to happen here. Uh, I, I just find it. it extraordinarily offensive and I don't think it's best practice to come in and have the organizer pick pick there there's no it wasn't even picked it was a discussion amongst people who are the friends of McPherson Square Library. Okay. I, I think when you say the friends of McPherson Square Library and they're we 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 have been friends of McPherson Square Library since two thousand five oh and we run how many events here? Perfect. About Great. Dozens and dozens. So then you have your own thing going, so these friends are different. So to act like we haven't been friends, it's like, is is very troublesome to us. You don't act like you haven't been friends. We know you have been. We are well aware and we're looking to partner with you. And we didn't even hear that there was an election, nor was there any conversation. Because I've started many friends groups. And usually it's a small group of intimate and, 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 of residents that are, are organized and come and meet, and it's not like this. And everyone's friends, and we all have the conversation, and that's what it really—that's usually how it works. 
It's hard to find someone who wants to be a treasurer, who okay. wants to be and keep it consistent, maintained, and the, and the group has sustainability and foundation to thrive and be here for a long time. Nobody's ever made any progress to have a friends group here. We, and I can probably understand why. Can we stop real quick? Why do you think a friends group has to be more important? Can we stop talking about, right now, what didn't happen, what happened, all that stuff, because it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about, get some suggestions of what you guys want to do now to form this group in a way that has integrity and, and yeah, just, just that, integrity. Go ahead. If you want to hear the true voice of the neighborhood, then you got to go to the neighborhood itself. You not do. Only, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, this is not the neighborhood. We are a few people that are step-ups, and we stepping up. But you need the voice of the neighborhood that's actually out there. Yeah, we see the needles. Yeah, we see the crack. We see the coke. We see the get down. We know all that. But we need to understand what the people of the neighborhood want. We need to see, we need to see hear their voice. Well, we have my Santos, idea, my, my idea is right. we have, we my have idea is William, we, we have My idea is you need to hold, what I'm saying, you need to put out some flyers and what we need for the people okay. of the neighborhood to come out and y'all meet these people we and present the them. Army. I know them. I know all of them. I know everybody outside. But do people know them? Yes, a lot of them do, actually. He's a resident. He's a resident. Right. We have people. That has happened. So, so, raise this day, these bro. were the leaders that could. Okay. Are you going to really trust us? Can we have, can we have, because there's, this, it's 6 o'clock. Right, yeah, I got it. I think it's past. Yeah. Can we have, yeah, it's past. Can we have recommendations on what to do now in just that, con that only that conversation? I would like to yeah. put what, forward you a recommendation. Go ahead, William. Uh, Jonathan is the president, Phyllis is the treasurer. Who, what other position do you put? Oh, Judy, you can no, be the vice president. No, we have, no, Judy can't serve. Just then, it, and it wouldn't, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Phyllis because she's not a resident. And she's not, and she's not the president. She's not the board. An interim board to introduce the neighbors. How are you doing that job? How are you doing that job? Residents okay, of the neighborhood. Can you tell me who you are considering and who you say are residents of this neighborhood? Right. Um, are we talking about the 19134 step code? Are we talking about our, who lives on our school stone? Because this is all part of Elkin. Anyone who lives on the other side of Kensington Avenue is another district. So well, who are you saying oh, okay. is yeah. the residents? residents and the community? Because to me, the community is who lives right here in this area, surrounding this park, right. whose kids have to deal with the drugs, the prostitution, right. not able to use the equipment in the park, can't come out of your house, you can't walk up the avenue, you can't, you you can't, 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 can't walk up there, <laughs> my daughter can't walk to the store, there's not enough lights, I see everything. Perfect. If there was better lighting, I could identify who's graffiti on the park. Do. I'm a big time right. ATV driver, I park my bike out there, my husband repairs them. We had the time you came over and said, because no one knew they could ride in the park. They thought because it was paved, they could ride there. Okay? No them. one knew until the day you came over when I was out there. My husband was repairing people's bikes because he does that. Right. Okay? So now my husband, my neighbors, none of us ride our bikes no more over in the park since right. that event. Okay? But lots of people don't know that they can. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so there will be some awareness. people, if you made up flyers, if I gave them out, Perfect. then they're not going to do it. But if you don't inform the people who live here, they don't know. Absolutely. They do not know. So would you they be willing to, they came to up go here today, the people you're talking about, who came up on their bikes, I knew like six of them. If I were to talk to them, flag them down, have my husband flag them down, and ask them, they would have said, okay. Just because they ride those ATVs, not everybody is disrespectful oh, yeah. and inconsiderate. I if you drive the people the right way, they're going to most likely. I and I've talked to a lot. Of, I've talked okay. to some of them. Some of them go through and. But listen, listen. I, everything you're saying is so. I just want to know who is the neighborhood? Who is here to represent what is going on? Oh, well, apparently right? the council is in the district seven. Because that's Councilman Keone's. Right. So okay. That's so that's everyone that lives in her yeah. district. Who all lives in the district? district then? I have not seen Raise the people that use this library. Who uses this right. library? Who uses this library? It's Friends of McPherson Square Library. Right. 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 Friends of the library. Library. John uses the library all the time. But let's. 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm right. feeling uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable you keep too. Putting, no, you keep putting my name out there like that. It's not about me. It's about the Friends of the Free Library. And you are the fact is, is the, the fact of the room, no, the fact of the, the fact is, we wouldn't there is a, I, I think there's a consensus, though, if, if we all raise a hand, that, this, that the way this is going to try to force it through even, I don't think anybody's going to even be comfortable with um, no. whatever you just said, um, appointing, because I think the, the tone and just the way it was all just done right now, mm -hmm. it's not, it, it's not going to work. It's a shame that it had to happen that way. It's not. It's, it's no, what it no, is. No, it's no, what no, happened. No, no, no. This is what we are meeting. So... So my recommendation is that you postpone up even the appointments right now because there's no way there's no way the, the room agrees with that. Uh, um, I would I would also like to put forward that uh, Tessa I've seen her in all these meetings she has a great passion and she's doing this stuff and it is for the people in the community and I know Phyllis is doing the same so I have no disrespect for you one and the same way I felt when I came in here tonight the same way I feel now you're beautiful people you're doing a hard job and attention will flare. Yeah, but this is what has to happen for us to talk and get together. But the main point is, people that say the whole area has been disenfranchised so long, and just because you ride an ATV doesn't make you a gang member. This I don't is what we've been trying to express. I ride, I ride ATVs actually. There's a conversation taking place even if you don't recognize it. It's not the formal, it's the neutral. And as you invite these people in, as these events take place, they're going to gain that confidence if you took the time, you took the respect to include them. And you're going to have a much better board for it, you're going to have a lot less vandalism for it. My opinion. So I'll let everyone know in the next meeting is because I haven't talked to Judy about when it would be, but we had discussed every third Wednesday. I think that would work for right now. Yeah. The third Wednesday of March. Is. But but I, I hope is is there a consensus that it's it's an open nomination process and if there's some clarity about who's eligible to run? as a patron or a user of this library, because my understanding is it's friends of the branch. So it should be people who are involved Absolutely. with the branch, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Not people from cross town or, you know, Chestnut Hill or downtown or Fish Town or wherever. It's the people that use this branch. And not, I not just because they're wonderful, but because it's their branch. Mm -hmm. I think I think um, I think still coming with the next meeting with, with the two options, I think explaining and, and I want to It was a little thrown off tonight because the captain did show up. And we had to kind of uh, rush it and try and get it through and I thought it was important that it got done. So it's it is what it is. So March the th that would be March twenty first. I don't know if it's better I do so on March 21st because this is terrible. I mean, like, I don't like, I don't like to conduct business like this. It should be a better way. But I, I think, you know, I, I would certainly like to think that, that we leave here with a commitment to telling people that there's going to be an election, to telling them that their nominations will be taken from the floor. You can organize as much as you want to shape the outcome of the election. That's, that's an organizer's job. But to appoint officers without allowing the community to We were going to vote on the appointment of whether everyone was in agreement of what it was. But that didn't happen here. You, so I have a question. You don't think it ever appropriate or okay for, for, um, for someone who is responsible for the outcomes to, to select and appoint a, 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 a committee, a board? Mm -hmm. I have never, ever seen, it's like this, where an outsider comes in and appoints officers. I'm not an outsider, so let's... You live in New Jersey. You live in New Jersey. What? You live in New Jersey. She lives in New Jersey. I live in New Jersey, absolutely. But I will tell you something. I am not an outsider. I am someone that comes in here. I don't claim to be a resident. I don't claim to be whatever. But I'm in this community pretty, okay. pretty deep. So an outsider, I would say an ally. Yeah. So don't worry about where I live. Yeah, that's, um, I don't think that. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I am sorry. But uh, we, we would let the residents take a more pleasant experience. Me too. Me too. I did not have it tonight. No, it didn't. It didn't happen again. So we're respectful. So March 21st, 5 o'clock.
We will have an outline, detailed, scheduled plan of elections and how it will go. And from there, we will appoint officers. And in the meantime, I will continue to work with our partners to have what's going on in McPherson Square, keep everyone in the loop, and go on as necessary. So there will be a, a, very, a very formal election process that you all will be aware of and participated in. Thank you for coming tonight. Before you go, this is Mr. Isaiah Thompson from the City Paper. If you'd like to have a chat with him, be sure to keep in with what's going on. I don't need to come here and interfere. I'm just a witness on behalf of the library.